As regular viewers know, this channel is mainly focused on sailing and rowing small boats, especially the wooden boats I build. But really, I like just about anything that floats. I enjoy boats for their own sake, but ultimately, I see each boat in my fleet as a tool with a unique purpose. Small non-powered craft provide an excellent means of reaching beautiful wild places many vehicles can't go. I'm particularly interested in small remote creeks in my local area. These woodland streams are like hidden highways leading into the heart of some of the wildest, most untamed places in western Kentucky and Tennessee. Recently, I discovered an unlikely new tool for my kit that is well suited to the purpose of creek exploration. Having little experience with them, I've always looked on the stand-up paddleboard with skepticism. They can't carry much of anything gear-wise, seem prone to throwing their rider, and don't even have a place to sit down. Also, most people paddle them barefoot. You won't catch me without some form of shoes on, even around the house, usually. On top of all that, they also seem very expensive for what basically amounts to a pool toy. With summer beginning to wind down, I noticed an inflatable board on sale for $200 at a large chain store. That seemed like a pretty reasonable price to me. I decided I would take a chance to see what these things were really like, and at the very least, it should be a fun toy to paddle around the dock. The board I purchased is a Z-Ray 10 foot 8 inches long and 33 inches of beam. It's considered an all around board and I now know that 33 inches is a pretty fat beam for one of these stand up paddle boards. And that makes sense for maximizing stability for the beginning paddler that the manufacturer is likely targeting with this design. Some may object to me using this low end model as a representation of stand up paddle boards as a whole, but the thing is, I've built quite a few boats and I know the most important factors for performance are length, width, and hull shape. So you can't tell me that a boat that's the same length, same width, and same flat bottomed hull shape but costs $500 more is going to perform any differently. The only thing that could be different is maybe how rigid the board is. So I actually think this should be a pretty good representation of an all-around board. I understand that there are other formats such as touring boards and racing boards. My only real frame of reference for any sort of inflatable floating object is the standard pool toy squishy inner tube type of thing that's usually made of a pretty thin cloth, actually a very thin cloth, that I think is probably PVC cloth. I was pleasantly surprised when I got the board out of the box and unrolled. This thing was heavy duty, and actually it was heavier in terms of weight than I expect it to be. It's made of the type of cloth that you would imagine a Zodiac dinghy might be made of. I don't know if it's the same cloth, it's probably not, but it's a very heavy, durable seaming cloth. The board came with a large backpack that it can be stowed in, a hand pump with a pressure gauge, a spoon bladed two piece paddle with adjustable height that I thought was surprisingly nice actually. And it also came with a repair kit and a Schrader valve adapter. It took me about 10 minutes to get the board fully inflated with the hand pump. At first I thought the pressure gauge wasn't working, but it turns out it doesn't even register until you get up to 5 PSI. And once you do get up to 5 PSI, after that point, you've got quite a lot of resistance on the pump and it takes a little bit of effort. With the board fully inflated to 15 PSI, it was shockingly rigid. I was really impressed actually and my understanding is the reason they're able to make it so rigid is that there's a folding foam matrix inside the board that when it's deflated that matrix is folded up and lays down flat. When you inflate the board to 15 psi the matrix stands up and is giving you that extra vertical support. The board has plenty of stainless steel eye straps that can be used to tie down gear 
and it comes with shock cord already laced up in the front. You can just put your tote or your cooler directly under that shock cord and cinch it down. An eye strap on the bow is absent and I'm guessing the manufacturer did that on purpose to discourage people from trying to tow this thing behind a power boat. Keep in mind this model is sold at basically a grocery store. As a kid, I spent 10 years of my life highly dedicated to skateboarding. I even had a sponsor for a while. I think I've retained not all, but some of the balance that I developed from skateboarding. Once I got out on the water, I was really surprised at how stable the board was. I was expecting it to be a lot more tippy and require a lot more concentration and effort to keep upright. On the other hand, I also expected it to glide across the water and require minimum effort to propel, but that was not the case. I found this board to be slow. I figured 10 foot 8, almost 11 foot, would be a pretty good length, but maybe not. I think the real issue is the beam here. It's 33 inches wide. It makes for a stable board, but pretty slow. And it's not just wide in the middle, beam has really been maximized throughout the length. And that does make for a very stable board, but again, does not make for the best paddling characteristics. For some reason I can't fully explain, I don't really care for using a full long stroke very much with these. I've found that my preferred way of propelling this, if I'm not in a hurry, is a sort of a draw sculling stroke, which is typically used to pull a vessel sideways, moving the beam towards the direction you want to go. But I kind of use that stroke to move the board forwards and it's not very fast, but on flat water you have really precise control and you don't have to change hands. Draw sculling can also help with making tight turns. The board has three fins or skegs, I'm going to call them skegs, and two of them are permanently attached and they're short. They're only about three inches deep. The removable one is maybe eight inches deep. It's pretty big. With the removable one installed, the board tracks very straight, which is great. That's what that skeg is supposed to accomplish, but it can be really hard to turn. And that is where I find draw sculling to be really useful to turn the board if you need to turn around in a tight area, like among a bunch of docks or back in a narrow creek. This particular design isn't nearly as sporty as I thought it would be, but it was still a lot of fun just to paddle around. But what I love about it most is the ability to carry the board through rough terrain, through the woods, down to the water, and access some areas that I can't get to with any of my boats, even the smallest ones, just couldn't get in there without having to travel a long distance over water. And that to me is the biggest advantage of a stand-up paddleboard. The ability to just carry it to the water over rough terrain anywhere. Even with my cooler, my paddle, and my tote still secured to the board, I can carry it a few hundred feet, no problem. 
So portability in general is definitely the biggest advantage of especially an inflatable stand-up paddleboard. That's no big secret, but I have to admit, that is pretty cool. You could pack this thing up and take it on an airplane. For someone that isn't comfortable standing up and paddling, or just as an end to that, they do make basically kayak seats that you can buy, and then you've got a lightweight, compact, ultra portable kayak, and you can use a double paddle with it. And I did test out a double paddle with it, and it does just fine. It felt just like a sit on top kayak. I've already taken my board on a couple of adventures, and I have videos coming out soon. And they were pretty short range outings, but I was able to get into some really remote places that otherwise I would not have been able to do, even with my smallest boats. So I know this was a little departure from my usual content, but I guess the lesson I learned is not to judge a book by its cover and not to assume that I know something that I have no direct experience with. I was pleasantly surprised by how much fun this stand-up paddleboard was and, and actually how useful it could potentially be. Pennants are now available at cumberlandrover.com. Historically flown for signal purposes, a pennant is that indescribable something that your boat is missing. They can help you read the wind, increase visibility of your small craft, and they just look cool, fluttering from the masthead or yard of a lug sail. You can have any color you want, as long as it's bright red. I have two styles of pennant now available at cumberlandrover.com.